Hello, welcome to Prism Technologies. I'm Venkat. This is part 32, Abstract Classes. In this session, we'll learn the basics about abstract classes. And in a later session, we will learn where to use these abstract classes in a real-time project. To create an abstract class, we use abstract keyword. Let's look at an example. Okay. Usually, to create a class, we use the class keyword. For example, if I want to create a customer class, I would say class customer. So this is a non-abstract class. To make it abstract, we just use an abstract keyword. So now, customer class is an abstract class. So what do we mean by abstract class? Abstract classes are incomplete, meaning they have abstract members. Now, within a class, any member can basically be an abstract member. For example, properties, methods, events, etc. Okay, so how do we make a member abstract again just by using abstract keyword? For example, let's say this customer class is going to have a print method and I want that print method to be an abstract method. The way we do it is public and the method doesn't return anything and then print. Now, if we provide a method like this inside a class, then this is a non-abstract method. If you want to make this an abstract method, all you do is you use the abstract keyword. Now, when you use the abstract keyword, the method cannot have implementation. Okay, because an abstract method is an incomplete method. And it is there for any class that's going to derive from this abstract class, you know, to provide implementation. Okay, so if I go ahead and build this, we will actually get a compiler error stating that, you know, print cannot declare a body because it is marked as abstract. So any abstract member cannot have an implementation. It's basically incomplete. So now, if you look at this, customer class is an abstract class and it has a print method. Now, I told you abstract classes are incomplete because uh, they don't have implementation for all of its members because they are abstract. So since they are incomplete classes, it doesn't make sense to be able to create an instance of this class and use those members to do something for you. That's why you cannot create an instance of an abstract class. Abstract classes cannot be instantiated. They can only be used as base classes for other classes. Okay, so for example, for this, I mean, this program class can inherit from customer class. So when a non, so if you look at this program class, it's a non-abstract class, which is why it doesn't have the abstract keyword. So when a non-abstract class inherits an abstract class, then your non-abstract class has to provide implementation for all the abstract members within the base class. If it doesn't, and if I try to compile, then I get a compiler warning. Okay, I mean, let's put the access modifier here. That's what the error is about. We'll talk about access modifiers in a later session. So let's go ahead and build the solution. So program does not, program class does not implement abstract member customer.print. So since this class is inheriting from the customer class, then this class has to provide implementation for that abstract method. If the program class doesn't wish to provide the implementation, then you can mark this class abstract as well. So if I go ahead and build this, now it will happily, you know, succeed the build. That's because, you know, you're marking this program class as abstract, meaning it's, it, it has got some abstract members. So program is inheriting from customer. So this abstract print method, which this class has implemented, uh, you know, inherited, it's not implementing that, so we are turning this class also into an abstract class. Okay, so the bottom line is if a class inherits an abstract class, then the class has got two options. Okay, let's look at the slide. Option one provide implementation for all the abstract members inherited from the base abstract class, or if the class does not wish to provide implementation for all the abstract members inherited from the base abstract class, then the class has to be marked as abstract. So you have to do one of these two options if your class is going to inherit from an abstract class. Okay, here we decided to mark our class as abstract. But on the other hand, if you don't want that to be abstract, then you have to provide the implementation for this print abstract method. Okay, and to do that, a public void print. So now 
we are actually providing the implementation for the abstract method. All right. So now if we go ahead and build this. Oh, yeah. In order to provide the implementation, you have to use the override keyword. So now if we go ahead and build, a build solution, the build succeeds. Okay, and obviously if you want to call that method, you have two ways. You can either create an instance of the program class, like so, program p equals new program, and then you can say p dot print method, p dot print, you know, you can either do this, or you can create an instance of your abstract class. Remember, you cannot create an instance of an abstract class, but an abstract class reference variable can point to the derived class object. So what we can do here, instead of creating you know, program P, you can say customer C is equal to new program. This is possible you know, from the concepts of inheritance. We know that a derived class object, you know, uh, a, a parent class reference variable can point to a derived class object. Okay, so similarly, here we can just say c dot print, and if we go ahead and run that, you know, print method. All right, so let's go back to the slides. So we we have seen that we use the abs abstract keyword to create an abstract class. An abstract class basically is incomplete and hence cannot be instantiated. An abstract class can only be used as a base class. You cannot, you know, create an instance of that class and you use that. An abstract class cannot be sealed. This is a very important point to remember. We know that, okay, in the inheritance chapter, we, we learned that if you want to prevent your class from being inherited by another class, then we use a sealed keyword, okay? So if we use the sealed keyword, then we know that that class cannot be used as a base class. Okay, but whereas by definition an abstract class can only be used as a base class. So what you cannot do is you cannot say, okay, my class is going to be abstract and sealed at the same time. Why? Because they contradict each other. Abstract means this class can only be used as a base class. Sealed means it cannot be used as a base class. So they contradict. That's why a class cannot be an, an abstract class cannot be sealed or a sealed class cannot be abstract. An abstract class may contain abstract members, you know, methods, properties, indexers, events. All of these can be abstract, but not mandatory. For example, I can have a class. Okay, I am, you know, I'm creating this customer class, and it has a print method, and it's abstract. But I can create a class without abstract members and still mark my class as abstract, that's possible. And if a class is an abstract class, there's no guarantee that it's going to have some abstract members. Your class can have all members implemented and it, and it can still be abstract. That's fine. Let's look at that. So when I say console.write, okay, we'll just say print and don't, let's comment that. Let's comment this as well. Now, if you look at this class customer, it's marked as abstract, but it doesn't, it, it haven't, I mean, it didn't get any abstract members. If I try to go ahead and build that, it builds successfully without any issues. So keep that point in mind. An abstract class may contain abstract members, but not mandatory. Okay. And a non abstract class derived from an abstract class must provide implementation for all inherited abstract members. Okay. Basically, we know that if a class, you know, whether it's abstract or non-abstract, if a class inherits an abstract class, then there are two options available for that class. You know, the class can either wish to provide implementation for all of its members and, and remain to be a non-abstract class, or you can turn that class into non-abstract and it need not provide implementation for, you know, inherited abstract members. In the next session, we will actually talk about, you know, where we use this abstract classes in a real-time project. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET and C-Sharp interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.